We thank God and give him the highest possible honor. Double honor to the former prophets and apostles of old, the same double honor to our present day leader. Truly we thank God for the man of God, Pastor Geno Jennings. We thank God for all of the ministering brethren who are on the pulpit at this time and those who could not make it. We thank God for all those who have traveled such a great distance to come and worship along with us. This has been a journey for us all, brothers and sisters. And we give all the glory and honor to the Lord God. All the glory and honor to the Lord God for blessing our hands, for blessing our minds to put our hands to work, to beautify his temple where his people can come worship in spirit and in truth. Thank God for all those who traveled a great distance. We know some could not make it. Those who are maybe watching at this time, we're grateful for you, though you could not make it. We thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, it's been a, a, a touching journey, brothers and sisters, how the congregation pulled together to make this temple what it is by the help of the Lord. By the help of the Lord, we were able to obtain what we have. We're all, we're all touched by the collective effort, not just by those who are here in Atlanta, but those from abroad who kept us encouraged. Through the pandemic, we worked. Through the pandemic, thank God, we worshiped. Through the pandemic, we did not close our doors, but they were open, and we thank God for it. We thank God that there was no outbreak in our temple these two years. God has blessed us. God has richly blessed the truth of God and we're grateful for it. We take no credit of our own, but we give all the glory and the honor to God. This is our time for dedication, brothers and sisters. Thank God. Thank God. It's our time for dedication. It's been a long time coming. Amen. And thank God. We thank God for all the effort that has uh, been put in by the brothers and sisters to have the parking the way it is, to have the transportation the way it is. Uh, the same effort, I wanted to thank Philadelphia. They always do a good job. Amen. Every time we go there, it seems effortless. And so we thank God we try to mirror the same thing here, the hospitality that we have been shown over the decades elsewhere. We try to deliver the same here by the help of God. And so we're grateful for all of you. Thank God. Thank God for our musicians. Thank God for our ushers. Thank God for every auxiliary that's in participation. We want to give uh, just brief moments for our elders and ministers who are with us at this time. Brief remarks. We'll first have our dear Elder Jones from Columbia. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We certainly thank God much for him. Sending the holy prophets and the apostles of old. Truly, we thank God for our pastor and general overseer. I thank God for him. And all the ministers that labor along with him, we certainly thank God for them. Truly, it's a blessing to be here in the Atlanta temple. This dedication here of this beautiful temple that's been constructed here by all the brothers and sisters. It's just truly a blessing to see the work of God continually progressing. And I thank and praise God because, as Brother Raj said, uh, sometimes it's been tough getting the work done. Because believe me, I know we had the same struggle, but we worked as a collective group, not just in the local area, but to all those that travel to help out. But I thank God for so many that do have that mind to work. You know, the Bible said the people had a mind to work. You got to have that in your heart to be able to do whatever it takes to make sure that the work of the Lord get done. And let me say this here. Now that the work is done, it's your time to be in the house of the Lord and learn. It's your time now. God has taken away all excuses now for you to say, I don't have no place to go. Now he's given you a beautiful place here to be here. Don't be here just to get it built and then don't see you no more. No, come to church and get the word taught to you. Why is that? Because I'm telling you, the devil is as a roaring lion, 
seeking whom he may devour. And don't think that he won't fight you even much the more now. He's mad. He's already mad. All right. He's mad at God and he's mad at you. You know, he, he's just mad. I was listening to some messages the pastor taught some weeks ago and something resonated in my mind with something he said. You know, the devil, he's jealous of you because you're trying to be like Jesus when he was kicked out for trying to be like God. But he had a different motive. But he's still mad. And he's jealous. He's the spirit of jealousy. So you need to continue to understand you're still here. I heard the sister testify. I thank God I'm still here. Regardless of what I go through, I'm still here. That's what we have to give God praise for, saying We're still here. Just remember to keep pressing your way. Regardless of what the devil put in your path, keep pressing your way. Keep coming, hearing the word of God. As the scriptures say, have your loins girded about with truth. And pray that the Lord might continue to bring the message through the ministers and through our pastors. Y'all pray much for the Lord. Thank God for Brother Elder Jones. Uh, Minister Philip uh, Williams from Florence. Go with you. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. We are so grateful to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank God for his mercy that he sent to us over and over again. We are so grateful to be in the house of the Lord. The Lord has did a great thing here. We pray that you continue to strive and do that which is pleasing in the eyesight of the Lord. As that you would pray, my joy in the Lord. Amen. Finally, a brief remarks from Minister Williams of Augusta. Greetings, saints. Come on, sir, praise the Lord. Y'all know I'm going to say that. I'm just so thankful to be here in the Atlanta Temple because I, I came down in, in the early days and seen when they was in the tent and when they was preparing this. And I'm just as proud as I can be of Minister Roger English and the saints here in Atlanta. Come on, give them a great hand praise. This temple is beautiful. I want to say this, saints, we need to value what we have. I'm talking about y'all don't take it light no more, don't care what nobody say. Let's value what we have here with the truth of God. Amen. Because I'm telling you, we living in the hour, listen to me, we are living in the hour when the abomination of desolation is going on around us every day. I'm talking about in everything that you look at. And I thank God every day that I got on this Truth of God train. Because Apostle Geno Jennings is the only one I know that has the platform that he has that's challenging all of it. I'm talking about in politics, in Hollywood. Come on. Come on. In the sports world. I mean, he don't bag up from none of it. And, and I'm just thankful to God to be connected to him, a man that's determined to obey God. So I thank God for all these brothers that he have with him too. I mean, I always tell y'all I'm 70 years old because I ain't no novice. I done been in this thing a while. I done had all the baptism, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptism. I done had the Jesus name baptism. I went all the way over to Israel and went out in the Jordan River seven times. But I didn't get it right until I got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, say praise the Lord. And I'm talking about a bishop that had been baptizing folk. But when I heard this truth of God, it put me in check. I said, I can't remember when I got baptized that they say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I thank God for this ministry and I value it and pray for Apostle Geno Jennings 
every day that God would keep him strong, continue to bless his family, and even these fine brothers, because I tell you what, Brother Roger English, when I first got on board, I'm, I'm just about one of the older men in there, but them young guys come there and, you know, gave me a jump start. Brother English came all the way to Augusta twice and baptized them for. He didn't just call me and say, Bishop, I'm gonna send them down there to you, you baptized. No, he drove all the way down there, told me to get the pool ready. He came down and baptized them, then called headquarters and gave Augusta the credit for it. Come on, say praise the Lord. I tell everybody, I tell everybody that Elder Jones put the training wheels on me. I used to be calling him, talking to him, and he worked with me till he, till he got me in shape. Then he said, now I done took you as far as I can take you. You're going to have to talk to Apostle Gino Jennings now. And so I thank God for all of them. Brother Evans and all of them came down to Augusta and preached and helped me. After all them folks pulled out on me and stampeded when the truth of God came up in there, those brothers got under me and supported me. And I thank God for them. Come on, say praise the Lord. So let's value what we got here. Let's value. Thank God for y'all. Y'all pray for me. Thank God for Minister Williams. Thank God for you, dear minister. Uh, brothers and sisters, special announcement. There's a car that's blocking others. Red Ford Focus. License RWJ5288. Please. Red Ford Focus blocking others. They're trying to get out. I don't know why, but RWJ5288. <laughs> so please, look on the things of others. All done. Brothers and sisters, as we're here to dedicate this temple, have the mind to dedicate your life unto the Lord. I present unto you our, the Apostle Pastor Geno Jennings. Amen. Right Thank you, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> we're going to ask everybody to stand, please, as we ask God's blessing upon this wonderful temple that he blessed us with. Eternal everlasting God in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the one true living God of the holy prophets and of the holy apostles whom we thank and praise for your divine wisdom and your perfect understanding of all things. We thank you for being the one true living God. Yes, sir. A God to have no errors and have no flaws. That's infallible in all things. Well. We thank you once again for living up to your holy sanctified word. You have brought again to pass that you have shown many years ago. <clears throat> You have proven to be faithful. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for this place here and for the laborers that have labored faithfully. We thank you for the many prayers that you have answered and the provisions that you continue to make unto this present hour. Yes, sir. How you are consistent in giving the truth of God victory in every state, town, village, and country. Now that we are here in Atlanta, Georgia, in this place, we ask you to look down from heaven once again. Hallelujah. Let your holy word be magnified here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let the word of God be preached for the edification of the soul of the human family. That the hearts of men and women might be pricked from hearing the gospel of God and repent of their sins and go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, Lord. Let your healing virtue be given here. Hallelujah. 
Open the eyes of the blind, let the dumb speak, and let the lame walk. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Let thine word continue to be made manifest. Eternal, everlasting God, consecrate and dedicate this house. Glory to God as you did in the days of Solomon. Let your spirit fill every room. Glory to God that the seekers, hallelujah, that all the seekers that's calling on thine holy name, thank God, hallelujah, may be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Speaking in other tongue and the spirit of the almighty God give utterance. Look down upon all them that are listening and watching around the world. Let the heart of the unbeliever be pricked. Give healing. Hallelujah. To them that are sick. Look down upon the many brothers and sisters that are in the prisons of the world. Free their mind, free their heart, and free their spirit. Glory to God. That your Holy Ghost may fall upon them. We ask you to remember the poor. Make provisions for them. We can never thank you enough. Moreover, how you continuously fulfilling your word and your will. Again, we ask you to bless this house that the word of God may be preached, that holiness may be demonstrated according to what you have written in the book of Scripture, that the heart of the stubborn may melt. Thank God in you creating them a new mind and a new heart. Bless the remaining of these services. We we'll forever give thine holy righteous name the praise. These blessings we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. And to all of the millions that are watching. <laughs> Amen. Hey. Stranded at the airport back in Philadelphia for hours. But you made it just in time for the work. Amen. To all of my beloved brothers and sisters and friends, and to the enemies that are watching again. <laughs> You are witnessing the dedication service of our new branch temple here in Atlanta, Georgia. Our address is 52 Fairborn Road, Southwest Atlanta. You're welcome to come and visit here. Our service nights is Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and again Sunday afternoons at 4.30 p.m.
Remember the address of the new temple is 52 Fairborn Road, Southwest Atlanta. You're always welcome to come. I want to thank all the brothers and the sisters for their hard work and their consistency, their dedication. You that is in the overflow room and you that is jam-packed in that other big tent back there, they told me it's packed back there also. We are thankful for you that came to give Atlanta some support. I'm glad for Elder English and all the ministers that labor along with him here. God truly is manifesting himself. And every place the truth of God goes. Every country, every city, every village, every town where this message have gone, God have truly given us victory for it. And uh, I can never thank God enough for the vision that God gave me over, over 45 years ago now before I met any of you. But many of you was in that herd that I tell you about. Amen. I'm witnessing what God showed me many years, and I'm not just witnessing here, but every place that we go. And only them that travel with me can bear witness to be able to go to any city in the world, any country, any state, and watch God live up to what he told us before I was Pastor Jennings, and then showed us the power and the effects of this message just two weeks ago. 245 in two days went down in water in the country of Burundi just two weeks ago. 245 souls went down in the name of Jesus Christ just in two days in the country of Burundi. So as you can see, brothers and sisters, many of you are new to the faith. And many of you have never been in holiness since you've been born. All of us came out of something. And we have to admit, regardless of where we came from, we did learn something. Some folks say, when I was in a false church, I didn't learn nothing. That's not the truth. Because the devil don't tell all lies. The devil tells truth and mix it with lies. So all of us have learned something. When I was in falsehood, I learned something. But when God revealed himself to me, God did that. And when he revealed himself to me, gradually he opened my understanding to the scriptures shown me this work and shown me what it consists of, but did not give me the full understanding of it. I just knew it consists of a whole lot. In the hood, they all called me Nicky, and we all called William Soup. So before I was Pastor Jennings, and before he was Elder Williams, <laughs> Soup and Nick, we would sit out on the steps. In the summertime, I'm 14 and 15, and telling him about today. That's right. Very few people can tell you that God showed them something. And it be true, and you walk in it, talk in it, witness it unfold right in your eyes. Everyone that I told about this work when I was a kid, because they couldn't see it, it was hard for them to believe it. 
But that's the only thing that kept me from backsliding as a young man was the vision that God gave me about this work. I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ 52 years ago. <laughs> Amen. I had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues about 46 years now. I've been pastoring 38 years this year. I've been preaching close to 45 years. And I'm only 58. You add those numbers up, I'm over 100. <laughs> the only thing that kept me from backsliding as a kid I was baptized at 6, and I received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue at 11. The first vision that God gave me about this work, I was about 13. When this stuff started to come to me. When I first heard God's voice, I was about 7. I can read about Samuel and Eli, but that was my first experience. I can not only read about it. I actually experienced it. In my mother home, I was walking, going to the kitchen, and God spoke to me. I didn't know it was God. I thought it was my father, like Samuel thought it was Eli. And he called me by name, Nikki. I stopped at the kitchen doorway, ran back to the step, thought it was my father. I said, you called me? He said, no, I, I didn't call you. I said, all right. Walked back to all the kitchen. Voice was louder than you hear mine. Nikki! I came back from the kitchen, went back to the step. Dad, did you call me? He said, no. I said, all right. I'm mumbling to myself. Something's wrong with him. <laughs> I ain't going to tell him that. <laughs> went back to all the kitchen. Every time I got right up the kitchen doorway, voice called out again. Nikki, I said, look, I know I ain't going crazy. I ran back to the store, to the uh, staircase again. Daddy, I thought you didn't call me. He said, if you bother me one more time, I'm going to give you a reason to call. <laughs> didn't know it was God then. Say, when you are called. When God calls you, that's what he does. Right. He calls you. That's right. But when he calls you, he don't send you to later. That's right. He call you, but he'll send you later. That's right. Because they don't need to send nobody. You haven't given them a job to do. Right. So you call them and prepare them for the job. So God began to show me this work and showed me countries that I never traveled to when I was young. Never. And now we're physically going to them. That's right. He showed me Africa. And now I'm in and out the continent. Showed me India. Now we're in and out the continent. Every country that we have gone, God has never allowed us to meet a failure. That's right. Every city, the numbers are still coming in for 2021 baptism. We had 7,445 for one year. <laughs> for one year. 7,000. 7,445 souls baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for one year. Amen. We done passed the day of Pentecost. We doubled it. Oh, yes. So any out there that think this is a, uh, a fluke, <laughs> truth of God is the message that God put in the earth. They give all members of the human family a chance, just a chance, to get on God's side and get right with him. It's your choice that God gives. 
for once in your life to do this thing right and to make church going worthwhile. That's different because years ago, many were sincere, many meant what they were doing, but uh, sometimes you don't realize you're wasting religious time until your understanding come open. I had no idea I was, I was wasting religious time when I was a child until God started dealing with me. That's right. When God started dealing with you, then and only then you start to see clearly. While you're in junk, you can't see it. No. Because you go along with it, you're jumping and shouting along with it. Until the Lord started dealing with you, you slow down then. And that's what happened. The moment God starts dealing with you, you slow down. He starts shifting gears. You know, you hear a truck driver, you can hear when those shift gears and that thing drop. And that's exactly what happens. Your church participation in whatever category, that starts to slow down. Because God spiritually starts to heighten your intelligence, the scripture. When your divine intelligence become heightened and you become now with this new spiritual awareness, you start to see things for the first time that you never saw before. Sometimes it can be frightening. When God started dealing with me in falsehood, I remember I told Williams, we're following a false prophet. Oh, yes. That thing scared him. He said, what? I said, Williams, we're following a false prophet. That's right. He said, what, 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 what? Nikki, Nikki. <laughs> Nick, Nikki, but that's your uncle. I said, my uncle Amen. is a false prophet. Yes, that's right. Yes, sir. And I said, everyone he's leading, he's leading them to hell. Yeah. That's right. You know, when God opened your understanding, you have to admit to what you see, even if it hurts your feelings. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I have no confidence in family churches. I desire my whole family to be in church. But family ran churches will run you right to hell. That's right. Because in most cases, the bishop going to have favoritism. And he's going to justify and condone family wrong and make it right. That's why God has to call you. Then fix you. Then at the appointed time, send you. And then when he send you, he'll put his word in you. And then before that, he'll strip all the fear that you have yeah. for anybody. That's right. And take it out. That's right. And replace it so you can just fear him. That's right. Or will take God to win that happen? He turn you against creation. That's right. You can go up against the governments of the world, the religions of the world, the millionaires of the world, and anybody popular, it doesn't matter to you now because only one thing can focus, God himself. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. All right, Atlanta. Let's get the book of pain open. Viewers, we're glad for all of you that have tuned in and to my enemies that have they thumbs down already? Mm. Yeah. All right. Got We're glad All right. for you heathens too. Because the devil using you too. When you go on social media, you don't find no holiness program spoken against like the truth of God is spoken against. Amen. I was thinking today, all these men that fight this, viewers, look at their work. Let's look at their work. You won't see much, but look at it anyway. Anytime you out here 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and you're not doing no more than you done when you got started, uh-uh. No. Bible said of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. 
we got started, we started out with 12 to 15 people. Now, we can't count them. When we went to Jamaica, we started out with about 8 to 10 people. Now we can't even get a place unless it's seat over 2,000. Amen. And the number's still swelling. Amen. I had a real, hallelujah, I had a real vision from God. That's right. One false prophet got so mad at me over social media, he said, you had a vision from the devil. That don't bother me. That don't bother me. I had a real vision from God. That's right. And I can say this, I don't have to worry about being penalized by Jehovah. Amen. He, he, he has to say amen, amen to what I'm saying. Amen. I want to say what? I say God, God. has to say amen. That's right. To what I'm saying, because if he don't, then God will be a liar. That's right. You can't say that. No. Or thank God I can say that with the authority of heaven. God says he confirmed the words of his servant. And he has confirmed what he told me. I remember when we was giving a telecast by God in Jamaica. Hundreds was coming in. Hundreds was coming in. God spoke to me one morning and said, go through the island in person. Uh, and that never came to me before. I want you to go through the whole island in person. I said in person? I called Minister Gary. I said, Gary, I said, the Lord spoke to me. Told me to go through the whole island in person. And he said he'd give me more results in person than he's given me on television. And on television, hundreds was pouring in. Gary said, where you want me to start? Where you want me to the first place? I said, I don't care. He just said, go through the whole island. So every place I go is ours. I said every place. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 44. Isaiah 44. And verse 26. Says what? That confirmeth the word that of his servant. That confirmeth the word of his servant. And performeth the counsel and of his messengers. And performeth the counsel of his messengers. Of his messengers. That's right. Amen. Yeah, God gave his messengers counsel. And then he confirmed the advice that he gives. That's right. My advice comes from scripture. That's right. I have scriptural advice. That's right. So when I tell you God stand behind it, enemies and heathens will say, who do he think he is? God ain't got, oh no, 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 God ain't got to do nothing. And what's confirmed unto us God by... God says he confirmed unto us... By them that heard him. I heard him. Heard him. Don't say I don't believe it. It's too late. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I say I don't believe you heard him. Listen to Pastor Gino Nicolius Jennings, born in Temple Hospital, 1963, February the 10th. That's I right. don't care what you don't believe. That's right. Amen. I have heard from your Lord. That's right. Before I met you. That's right. And it was Abraham's God. Amen. Abraham's God. That's right. That assigned me to this task. God also bearing them witness. And this is why I can say that God yes. stand Amen. behind it That's right. and confirm it. That's right. And have allowed us to go anywhere. Listen to this, what I'm about to tell you. There is no failure that will ever be made in no city, right. in no state, in no country right. in no town That's right. when the truth of God goes there. That's right. None. No That's hard for most preachers to say. The reason why I can say there won't be no failure because the Lord That's right. has spoken. That's right. And he stands behind us. That's right. I say no failure. No, no I didn't failure. say maybe. No, 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 I'm declaring none. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. Do you hear this? In the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3. Well, that's why we don't stay stifled. Hallelujah. In no place. Every place. My God, man, souls just come from everywhere. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Preachers came in with the entire congregations in Israel. That's right. Amen. Just coming from one area to the other. 88-year-old man, Bishop Ferguson, contacted me. Got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in the Grand Turkish Islands. He said he'd been going looking for churches for years because he wanted to live right. And I think it was one of his grandsons or something pulled me up on the phone. 88-year-old man heard this message, went down the water. They sent me a picture of him, went down to the Caribbean and out there in the river. And they baptized him and the man standing there with a staff and sent me his testimony. He said, I firmly believe that God has made you an apostle to the Gentiles of today. Amen. 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 My mission, brothers and sisters, is plain. Prepare you to meet God. God is closer today than he was 50 years ago. And this message, be holy, is the message for the last day. That's right. Not try to be holy. Be holy or go to hell. That's it. That's right. When he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, he cleared it up and made it plain and says, I am the Lord. That maketh all things. Adam was a thing. Yes, he was. Adam was one of those things that he made. That's right. I am the Lord that make all things. That, that stretch, stretch forth, forth the heavens alone. What? That stretch forth the heavens alone. No, a little Jesus helped him. That stretch forth the heavens alone. That straightened that out. That's right. One creator. One, creator. one maker. One ruler, oh, yeah. one God, yeah. one Lord, one Redeemer, That's right. one Savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That stretch forth the heavens alone. And that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. And what? That frustrates, that frustrates the tokens of the lies. And what does he do to diviners? And maketh diviners mad. Hold it right there. Oh, Them that cannot understand the intelligence of God. Get frustrated over scripture. That's right. You know, to know there's one God, don't take it lightly. Yeah. Mm, don't you ever take that lightly, because the world believe in multiple gods. That's right. And even many of them that have been claiming to be apostolic and Pentecostal, many of them, not all, but many of them now, yeah. have changed from one God to many. That's right. And have adopted the teaching of the Jehovah Witnesses Jesus is a God, and Jehovah is the true God. That's right. They got Jesus a little God helping the big God as if the creator need help. That's right. God don't need no help. That stretch forth the heavens alone. He made the heavens alone. That spreadeth abroad the earth by the myself. Earth by myself. That frustrates the tokens of the lies. That's what I want to do, frustrate the heathen. <laughs> That's right. Frustrate the heathen. Frustrate and I know this message frustrates the heathen. Oh, yes. Amen. And uh, when I think of the, I was telling uh, the brothers today, we was at Mother Ramsey's home enjoying some good home cooking there. And uh, we was talking and I was telling them how many of the preachers that I've known uh, who out here in 20, 30, 35 years, what not, have nothing to show for. Amen. I would be so dissatisfied if the only thing I can do for the last 10, 15, 20 years is swap church services with my preacher buddies. That's right. If that's all I can do is exchange services. You see, I know what that's like because in falsehood, that's what we've done. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Every weekend, Every weekend, we had what was called Joy Night. Yeah. And I've been a fellow musician. And we had tons of, see one thing about falsehood, they got some of the sharpest musicians. Yeah. The devil makes some good musicians. Amen. <laughs> so when all of us are getting together, and some of the musicians I came up with are recording artists now. So when me and Steve Ford and Calvin Carr and many of these, uh, Cheryl Tribute, Todd Tribute's aunt, mm. all of us, mm. 
How many the big gangs of us? I, I, how, how many organ players? Did, the organ players alone can fill this whole section of the church. Yeah. And we would just rotate. Because the word of God wasn't being preached no way. Right. And when you're in falsehood, you don't care. That's right. Because to you, having church is music, right. shouting, and jumping. That's right. That's having church. That's right. Only when your understanding come open to the value of preaching. Yes. And what role preaching plays. In your soul, when you understand it, then you will realize that the message is the center of worship. That's right. When I came up, man, we couldn't wait for Saturday. We're either going to be in North Philly, West Philly, South Philly, Northeast, in Jersey, in Delaware, somewhere. somewhere. Gangs of us. Man, we were packed churches out, musicians after musicians. I mean, we were play for hours yeah. one drummer brother this brother played so good he was known from all the other drummers his flavor was with his drumsticks but he would have a whistle in his mouth too blowing and playing he had do a roll and throw that whistle and start playing again My Lord. no gospel no gospel and then before your understanding come open to the value of the word, mm -hmm. what happens is you will start fellowshipping with anybody and anything, even though you know there are things they don't believe, That's you right. turn a blind eye to it. Because your friends go there. Yeah. You start turning a blind eye. So we would go to the churches. Fellowship with them that believed in women preachers. And my preacher didn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. When they have an anniversary, preacher I was on that didn't believe in women preachers. But if a church can raise good money yeah. for his anniversary, mm -hmm. he will put their belief on hold and let the bishop come in who believe in women preachers. Amen. And let him preach for that church tonight just to get that big offering. That which we have seen. Listen. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 3. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Bishop yes, Williams? I was raised in that, where the love of money makes Bishop compromise. Right. Beliefs. Mm -hmm. And when you compromise your belief for friendship, when God opened my understanding, I made up my mind I ain't fellowshipping with nobody that don't believe that book. That's right. Nobody. That's right. Different preachers contact me. Pastor Gene, I want to fellowship with you. We get, we sit and talk about doctrine and whatnot. They say, well, I agree with you, but uh, about that divorce and remarry, I tell them, well, look, you, when, when you're ready, you call me. Yeah. Will you come preach for me? Yes, I'll come preach for you. Burn your church down with Bible. But you ain't coming here. No way. So coming up in falsehood, we came out of the church service swapping. And this is where hypocrisy is manifest. How can you preach against sin and yet let sinners preach for you? That's right. Right. You can't get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain. That's right. If you know a man don't believe something, don't let him preach. If there come any unto you. This, this is the strictness of the doctrine. In second John, Never mind friends, never mind brothers, my blood brother. Elder Jennings in Minnesota. When we was in falsehood, there was a bishop that had the biggest so-called apostolic church in Baltimore, Bishop Shawell. And Shawell wanted my brother to be the next one to take over his church, was gonna ordain him bishop. Yeah. My brother 
asked me, he, he ended up leaving the church to his daughter. But my brother Chris asked me, he said, Gene, what would you have done if I would accept Bishop Shaul offer and would have been a bishop of that big church? I said, I'll beat you so far down in that hell, you, mama won't recognize it. <laughs> he said, what? I said, you would have been another false prophet That's right. on the firing line leading people to hell. That's right. He said, I said, yes, exactly what you would have been. Amen. I said, because if God did not call you and send you, then you wouldn't have what it takes to maintain what's left in your hands. That's right. And then your love for falsehood would have filled the church. Oh, yes. So when God deliver you from falsehood, he don't deliver you for nothing. No. He deliver you and open your understanding and let you know what it consists of. So you can stay out of it. That's right. And so no teachings can trickle in. Yeah. Now, that's why God make the preacher a watchman. A watchman. Yeah. Yeah. To truly look out for the souls of the church. Yes, sir. Right. Soul protection yes, right. is preaching awareness. That's right. That's right. You cannot protect, follow a soul, and yet don't monitor their biblical diet. That's right. Yeah? That's right. You know, when the word of God is preached, you got to be on a scriptural diet. And the watchmen have to watch the diet and make sure you stick to the diet That's right. of the scriptural nutrition That's right. that come from the letter. That's right. Because you have to eat what God permits you to eat, and that is meat for the belly, that is bread, that is water, and that is wine, which is the blood of Christ. That's right. Now I got to look at your eating utensils. A hammer, sword, and an ax. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So all spiritual development is determined by what you eat from Scripture. Yeah. You can fast, you can pray, but without Scripture, no growth. No growth. I say, wait a minute, Pastor Jenna, you mean to tell me I can fast and pray, and if I don't listen to the Word of God being preached? I won't grow. You most certainly will not. That's right. Why? In order for you to pray right, you got to learn the scripture. That's right. Because the apostles ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. The scripture teaches you how to pray. The scriptures teach you how to fast. The scripture teach you who to associate yourself with. The scripture teach you who to separate yourself from. So then faith cometh by hearing. Listen. In the book of Romans 10 and verse 17. How do we get our belief? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing. Our whole belief. It comes how? And hearing by the word of God. Amen. You can speak in tongue all you want. Speak in tongue through the whole message. That's right. uh -huh. Yeah, all right. all right. When that tongue is done slapping around in your mouth, right. your belief, your faith, faith. has to come by hearing. That's right. How can you hear That's right. without a preacher? And how shall they how preach, can he preach except they be sent? Except they be sent. As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them. Of what? That preach the gospel of peace. Do you hear this? That's right. So I came out of the church swap service. I played the organ. And the way we would relieve each other. They jumped and get shouting for about three hours nonstop. Yeah. Each musician get tired. We just come and relieve the other. We did it a very slick way. If the organ... Guy is hitting a certain chord, and he's been playing about 30 minutes or 45 minutes. He started getting tired. He'd look at one organ, nod his head, and he'd come on up and look at whatever chord he's playing and duplicate it or ad lib to it and pick it up, and then he go for about it. Other drummer, he's playing while the other one relieving him. He'd keep things going with his foot on the bass drum. And then toss, sometimes he'll toss the sticks to the other. He'll catch them. Lord. 
go on the drums and start wailing. Yeah. Service swapping. Yes. Imagine doing that for the rest of your life. And I still know people that's still doing. I mean, who was doing it when I was in falsehood. Yeah. Have not made no changes after 40 something years later. My Lord. The strictness of the faith is that if a man don't bring yes. this doctrine, whosoever transgresses, listen at this. In the book of 2 John, chapter 1, we'll start at verse 10. All right. If there come any unto you, if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, and don't bring this teaching. Receive him not into your house. Right. Neither bid him God. Hold it. See, that, that, that broke that up for me. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, take God, when I start out in the basement and my mother and father's home, different preachers, different elders and bishops would stop by who we used to fellowship with. And they wanted to preach. And they thought I was too, got too big for myself. I mean, how big you gonna get in the basement? <laughs> because I told all of them, no. Yeah. This bishop come by, uh, Pastor uh, Gina, won't you let me give you a hand? No. Yeah. Another bishop came by, won't you come under me so I can help you? I said, no. Right. Another bishop came by, look, I got a church, you can have it. I said, no. <laughs> Another bishop came by, they just kept coming like bees. Amen. Um, bishop said, won't you come unto me? I said, no. He was preaching for 60 years. And his congregation couldn't fill the office here. My Lord, my Lord. I mean the office. Whatever office that Raj used for the minister office, his congregation couldn't fill that office. My Lord. And been in that stage for over 60 years. My Lord. When you take matters in your own hands, most of these men don't claim they called until they have a grievance with a bishop. That's right. When they have a grievance with a bishop right then, oh, God called me. God ain't did nothing. <laughs> That's right. Because when God called and God sent, God stands yeah. behind his work. That's right. Yeah. And God work doesn't have, it's not fruitless. No. It is full of fruit. Full of fruit. Yeah. That's right. Everywhere the apostles went, my God, God just gave them plenty of fruit. Oh, yes. Are you listening? Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Do you hear this? In the book of St. Matthew 7 and verse 17. Every. Every good tree. Good tree. Bringeth forth good fruit. Every good tree. I look at the truth of God. He given us some good fruit. Oh, yes. Good fruit throughout America. Canada, all across the continent of Africa, Sweden and Australia, and right. New Zealand and across Europe, That's right. South Pacific, South Pacific Islands, near Japan. That's right. We got good fruit in Malaysia, good fruit in Vietnam, That's right. good fruit in Spain. All because of who? God. God. That's right. So this, I'm God called and God sent. 10, 15, 20, 30 years, 30 years with absolutely nothing. Nothing. That's right. What kind of God do you have? And the Lord added to the church daily. What? The Lord added to the church daily. What? The Lord added to the church daily. How did he do it? Such as should be saved. We're living through that now. That's right. Daily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. We're experiencing that daily. now, daily. Daily. Amen. I know more and more I see that scripture. Yeah. Without a vision, people perish. people perish. Without a vision, a preacher can die and leave you a church or churches or organization. But if God don't make you a preacher and give you leadership skill, right. everything he put in your hands, you'll fall apart. That's right. It's like a captain that died and leave the ship to you. But if you don't know how to run a ship, everything going to sink. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. The 
holy book says what? Back in 2 John 1 and verse 10. Yes. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. I want to encourage all the brothers. Stick to this. This, that's right. You stick to this. That's right. God have proven to me you ain't got a detour for this, from this to be prosperous. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, no. Lord, oh, thank God we have helped this thing strict, hard, tight. That's right. Without budging at all. That's right. Amen. Hey, we helped it before we got married. And there's many that was with me before I got married. And I remember one brother, I'm pretty sure he's watching now, Brother Vernon, uh, out of Baltimore. Vernon, he would often say, Brother, uh, you preaching like this and you ain't married. Wait till you get married. And his famous quote was this. Wait till you get married and taste the fruits. <laughs> that was his famous quote. He said, I promise you, Brother Gino, you are changed. I said, Vernon, you don't know God. Amen. He said, I know God. He said, but I'm telling you, you are changed. I said, Vernon, you don't know God. <laughs> That's right. He said, I promise you. After that, years later, after I got married, he came to me. He said, brother, I repent for what I said. He said, because it seemed like to me after you got married, you got worse. Amen. <laughs> Brothers, that minister, you don't want to just be a church service exchanger. That's right. Nor do you want to bargain That's right. scriptural beliefs. To keep friends. Oh yes. If a preacher don't believe what the word of God say, yeah. fellowship is out. That's right. That's right. It's out. That's right. You got the fellowship on Bible order. In First John chapter one and at verse five. First epistle of John chapter one verse five says, "This then is the message which we have heard of this him." This is the message. This is it. This is it. This is the message which we have heard. And declare unto you, we tell you that God is light. God is light. And in him is no darkness no at all. No sin in God at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and what and walk in darkness, what do we do? We lie and do not the truth. Here I know you don't believe there's no apostles now. I know it. Know it. You ain't preaching here. That's right. That's, right. That's right. Here I know you believe in divorce and remarriage. You're not preaching here. No way. No way. I think of the preacher that used to work along with us out of Mississippi. He didn't admit later that he didn't believe in no apostles now and no tithing. Yeah. So I remember when I first went down there to Fayette, Mississippi. Baptized about, I think, 32 or 36. And he said out of all the years he'd been down there, over 47 years, that many people ain't never been baptized there. Mm -hmm. He said, you baptized more people in one day than all the 40-something years I've been here. Lord. So we, all the monies that was raised, all the tithes and all the offering, I told him, I said, keep all of it. He said, what? I said, keep all of it. He broke down crying. I guess his tears was for real, but... <laughs> But uh, he said, what? He said, no preacher have ever came here and helped me. I said, keep all the money. I said, keep all the money. And I see you doing renovations down here, and you don't have no carpet on the floor. And I said, you keep all the money and put carpet on your floor. And I said, whatever other work you do, I said, you keep all the money. And, we, and you know where we go is a crowd. Right. And so it was a good piece of money. And I said, you keep, we, just a two-day service. Yeah. I said, keep all the money, all of it. Yes, Amen. Amen. Then later on, he said he didn't believe in tithing, didn't believe in offering. Lord. Uh, or rather, he believed in offering, but didn't believe in tithing, didn't believe in the apostles now. So later on, after he, we disassociate ourselves, I said, well, if you don't believe in tithing, you give us that carpet back. That's right. <laughs> That's what you do. You give us the carpet back because you believed in tithing when you got that carpet down there. Amen. But became an unbeliever after he got the carpet. That's right. That's right. You see, a lot of men want to use the name yeah. First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because it's the most popular 
holiness program on social media. That's right. Period. That's right. Amen. That's right. Until other religious programs, if you watch them, you can look at how many viewers they got when they have my name attached. If they use my name, they got several thousand viewers. Any message they got where they ain't talking about me, they ain't got that many viewers. And yet, we preach the name of Jesus Christ and got hundreds of thousands of viewers. That's right. Why? We want the world. That we want to trouble the world trouble with the this. World. That's right. We got a notice from YouTube for from last year, for 2021. 20, uh, uh, I didn't know they send you notices like that, but they sent the truth of God uh, a email that just for 2021, we had over 20 million viewers. Over 20 million viewers. It is the most popular holiness program. And who did it that way? God did. That's right. Why? Because this is the program that's barking against the world. That's right. Why religion is holding hands with the devil until you can't separate the so-called church from the center. That's right. The preachers are standing up for nothing that's Amen. worthwhile. Amen. And they don't care whether you went to hell that night. They let the men have long hair, men have ponytails, let you do anything you want, exchange wives, nobody won't stand up for nothing. That's right. That's why you have to be called and sent. And sent. Who it take got to do this thing right. If we say that we have fellowship with do him. Do you hear this? Back in 1 John 1 and verse 6. If you say. That we have fellowship with him. We have fellowship with him. Him. And walk in darkness. And you walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. Oh. We're liars. Liars. We're liars. We lie and do not the truth. Amen. Amen. Truth is something you got to do. Doesn't matter if I ordain Brother Roger Elder, if he pop up later and try to bring women preachers. I sit and talk to him. Hey, Rod, what's going on with you? Yeah. What's going on with you? I get a plane and quick get down here to Atlanta. Come on, Elder, we got to talk. That's right. And then we get in that room right. and wrangle in the scriptures. He can get in the spirit and run around that table. I'm going to sit and look at him. Yeah. And when he's done, I'm going to tell him, where's the Bible? Wait, the Lord ordained one woman. Yeah. I can't find it. And if you can't find it and refuse to change, yeah. no fellowship. That's right. No fellowship. That's right. No fellowship. No fellowship. Amen. You see, I believe what's written. Yeah. I believe what's written. And under no circumstances are we going to bargain. That's right. God brought me out of that. Church swapping trash. Yeah. I did it as a young boy. Oh yes. When I was a child, I speak as a child and thought as a child. That's right. And I became a man to put away that old childish stuff. That's right. That's right. Listen. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. It's and time. It's truth. time for the church to grow. Oh yeah. In wisdom oh, yeah. and knowledge oh, yeah. and understanding. Not keep doing the same old ritual change in services and you don't learn nothing. That's right. That's why we take our time to break down scriptures. That's right. Take them apart because the more you learn about God, the better you can serve him. Right. The more you learn about God, the more you can obey him. That's right. The more you learn about God, the more changes you can make to prepare yourself to live holy. That's right. When I came out of falsehood, it wasn't about God. It was about friends, yeah. association. Associations. You know, a bunch of young people just hanging out together. Yeah. Nobody really getting prepared to meet God. Right. Holiness, you must get prepared That's right. to meet your Lord. That's right. All these thousands of people from around the world coming to one message. For what? For what? what is God doing? That's right. Making a gathering. Yeah. 
God is, hallelujah, God is making a universal call. That's right. My God, he made it so plain. He said, my sheep will hear my voice. My voice. My voice. God said it. God said that. That's right. So you that are watching, if you're God's sheep, how can you hear the voice of a woman preacher? How can you hear the voice of a homosexual bishop? How can you hear the voice of a two God believer? That's right. You don't put friendship above scripture. That's right. God said I said at variance. Did you say so? When the word of God come into play, he going to set at variance. He going to start separating. Hallelujah. Sons from daughters. Think not that I am listen, come to send listen, peace on earth. Listen at this. In listen book, at this. In the book of St. Matthew 10 and verse 34. Follow me. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Think not. That's right. That's right. Think not. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Give me some juice out of this lapel. Think not that I am come to send come peace, to on, send earth. peace on, earth. on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. I didn't come to be your friend. That's it. That's right. He said I come to cut you. That's right. That's right. A man that's a real man will follow a message that'll make a man out of him. Yeah. I come from weak religion. Yeah. Weak religion produces weak people. That's right. Weak people forms weak churches. Yeah. You will find them preachers. They, they can have a minister's meeting. Everybody come together, believe different. Yeah. Everybody leave, believe different. Oh yeah. I'm a believer oh, yes. of what the word of God said. That's right. That you all speak same. the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. What I look like having a bunch of ministers come together and then we vote on what is right in the Bible. Everything is right in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. Everything. That's right. Vote on it. Vote on what? If the Lord said it, we believe it. That's it. Don't vote. Don't vote. That's right. Are you listening? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Think not that I am come to send peace that on I earth. That I come to be your friend. I came not to send peace but a sword. See, Jesus was militant. Yes. He wasn't that Hollywood version of Jesus. No. Who always talked with this little timid, sissy lassie voice. <laughs> No Hollywood make Jesus look like he's the most timid. That's right. Tiny Tim tipping through the tulips. That's right. When the Hollywood Jesus go up to someone supposed to be possessed of the devil, come out of him. Come out of him, my son, my child. My child. I bind you, Satan. That's right. That ain't the Jesus I said. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you hear what Jesus said? Think not that I am he come said, to send peace on earth. Think of him that way. I came not to send peace, but I a didn't sword. come to bring peace, but a sword. But to be brutal. Brutal. That's right. That's right. He come to be militant. That's right. He come to be forceful. That's right. That's right. And that type of preaching today is practically obsolete. They call that preaching unloving. Yes. They call that preaching hateful. That's right. They call that preaching full of anger and pride. Right. Because you have in your mind this Hollywood Jesus. Hmm. I don't serve a Hollywood Jesus. No way. No way. The Jesus who I serve is God himself. That's right. The Bible says he's a terrible God. That's right. Isn't it? Yes. What did he say? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Think not. Think not. That I come to bring peace. On earth. On earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. I come to bring what? A sword. And the Bible said the sword is the word. Is the word. Now that's what I am, a sword user. Hmm? 
Yes. That's what I am. A sword user. That's right. Thank God. That's and right. uh, we come along to sever ties to sever your satanic association. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Did you hear this? Now in Matthew 10 and verse 35. Look at what the word of God would do to you. For I am come to I set a man. I am come to set a man. At variance. At odds. Against his father. Against his father. Are you listening? That's right. Holiness will make you and your father go at it. That's right. It doesn't matter your father claim you the preacher. That's right. You'll Come find here. yourself bringing Bible to your father. That's right. Your father say, look, I'm called, I'm sent. Hey, pop. Hey, pop. pop. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Come back to Bible. That's right. Hey, 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 pop, you're an elder? Yeah. Who called? Oh, how you become an elder? God called me. Oh, the apostle didn't ordain you? Mm. Oh, no, ain't no pop. You was called the elder? Yeah, I was called the elder. Well, the apostle Paul told Titus, left I thee in Crete, that thou shalt set in order the things that are wanting and ordained elders in every city as, as I had appointed thee. Not as God appointed you. As I had appointed thee. As the thee. apostle appointed you. That's right. That's right. You, you got to make pop. Come back to Bible. That's right. Because God says he's going to do what? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Wait a minute. That's something. That's heaven, Amen. That's something. What will the word of God do? I am come to set a man at variance against his father. I experienced that. Before my father died, <clears throat> he worked with us. He said, I'm, I'm not called to be no leader. He was very honest. He said, I'm a preacher, but I ain't called to be no leader. He said, God ain't called me to lead nobody. And he said, I ain't letting nobody try to push me up to lead nobody. So one day, he, <clears throat> one Wednesday, he preached from the book of Acts, where it says about 120 was in the upper room. And he got up and said, if the Bible says it was about 120, then it had to be. 119. Mm -hmm. I, I sat there in the pulpit. Uh -huh. I didn't care if it was popped. No. I didn't bother him while I was preaching. I waited till he was done. After he gave the benediction, he get ready to get his Bible and belongings. I said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Dad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, the Bible says there was about 120 in the upper room. Right. You said it had to be 119. I said, where's it at in the Bible? He said, Gene, if the Bible said it was about 120, then it had to be 119. I said, well, if that's the case, somebody can say, well, it had to be 121. Right. Or 122. That's right. Or 123. Yeah. He paused. He said, well, what you said? I said, I don't say nothing but what the Bible said. That's right. It was about, about 120. I said, you know what you're going to do? He said, what? I say, you're going to come back before the people mm -hmm. and tell them the Bible didn't say it was 119. It was one about 120, and we're going to keep it about 120. That's right. Amen. That's right. What? I'm a set at variance. I am come to set a man at variance against his father. When he tossed that out, we was at odds. Oh, yes. It was peaceful, but we was at odds. That's right. That's right. After that, he looked up and laughed, put his hands on my shoulder and said, boy, I got newfound respect for you. He said, if you won't let me get away and I'm your father, he said, I ain't worrying about nobody else. That's right. And he got that right, buddy. <laughs> That's right. I don't care who you are. No. When it comes to God and God says, save yourself. This is a personal thing oh, yes. with you and God. Oh, yes. This thing about you being saved, you got to make personal. That's right. That's right. So personal until you ain't in here for nobody. Amen. But yourself. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Because of the word, you and my father may go throw down with the Bible. Oh, yeah. Pop, you've been preaching such and such a thing for years. Where is it in the Bible? Yeah. Well, you know what we've done. No, no, no. Where is it in the Bible? Right. 
But Bishop Huckabuck said, that's nice. I want to hear the chief shepherd and bishop of our soul. Let's get to the Bible. <laughs> that's right. Well, Apostle so and so, no, 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 no. I want, I want the chiefest. I want the chief the apostle chiefest. and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. That's right. That's who I want. Yeah. That's right. But Bishop Johnson said, I don't want that. No. Come on back to the Bible. That's right. But Bishop Bonner said, I don't want that. No. Come back to the Bible. Amen. But I was under Bishop S.C. Johnson for 30 years. Come on back to the Bible. That's it. I was under Bishop Lawson since 1912. Come on back to the Bible. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. You see, when God get involved, when God get involved, he upset things. That's right. And he upset things and move it from the norm of things. Yeah. Because he come to set at variance. I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Wait a minute. I come to do what to that man? I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Here's God will make a man to be at odds with his daddy. That's right. That's something. That's something. <laughs> God or not, I am come to set a man at I'm variance. set a man at odds. Against his father. With his own daddy. And the daughter. And now I'm going to get in the daughter. Against her mother. I'm going to make her and her mother have a fallout That's over right. what the Bible said. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to make mama and daughter have a fallout. Amen. Mama going to be around there trying to pray and prophesy without her head covered. And she going to see her daughter got her head covered. Why you got your head covered? Well, the mama, the Bible says that if we women pray or prophesy, don't have our head covered. We decide on our, our head. head. Well, my bishop, I, my mama, but the Bible said. Right. Well, my bishop, but, but the Bible said. My church organization, but the Bible said. And the daughter against her mother. Amen. Mama is, a, mama is assistant pastor somewhere. Yeah. Mama is your father's assistant pastor. Oh, yeah. And, very. and you had evangelistic license. That's right. Coming to the knowledge of the truth, now you step out the pulpit. That's right. Mama's like, Susie, what's wrong with you? You know this is evangelistic night. This is the night that we, we, we supposed to have a, you know, tag team preacher. <laughs> That's right. So you say, Mama, oh no. Oh no. The Bible said, I suffer not. Yeah. Yeah. Woman, the teaching, the use of authority over the man. Right. But to be in sound with all subjection. That's male chauvinistic teaching. Yeah. No, that's what the Bible said, Mama. That's right. That's right. Well, though, our, our founder of the church was women. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But the Bible says. Yes. And the daughter against her mother. Amen. Susan, go buy me some cigarettes. No. That's right. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because the Holy Ghost said, touch not. Touch not. That's Handle right. not. That's right. Susan, iron my work pants. Yeah. The Bible tells me to handle not. Handle not. What did the Holy Ghost say? And the daughter against her mother. So you disrespecting me? No, I'm obeying God. That's something. That's something. When the Holy Ghost step in, what happens? And the daughter against her mother. Susan, comb my wig for me. I can't do it, mama. Comb my wig. I can't do it, mama. Can't do it. You can't do it. The Bible said I hate every false way. That's right. The Bible said love not the world. That's right. Neither the things that are in the world. Susan, my boyfriend is coming over, and uh, your daddy and I, you know, he's still living. He ain't coming, so my boyfriend's coming over, and I want you to help me prepare dinner for me and Jim. I can't do that, Mama. Can't, can't do that either. I can't, I can't uh, prepare your adulterous meal. That's right. The Holy Ghost had. And the daughter against her mother. Susan, when you make a big cake, uh, bake me a cake, my, boy, my boyfriend birthday is coming up oh, and I, you know I want you to bake him a cake you know I, I know I can't, I can't give him an, an adulterous gift that's right why and the daughter against her mother oh. honey honey where are my pearls at mm. I, I, uh, you got to find her mama 
the Bible speak against the wearing of pearls. Give me the second chapter of the book of First Timothy. Quickly. First Timothy chapter two, and we'll start reading verse nine. At verse nine, that's what. In like manner also that women adorn themselves how in, in modest apparel. What with shame face with shame face and sobriety. Sobriety not with broided not, hair not not with broided hair with hair decoration or gold or gold or pearls or pearls or costly array. Pearls. That at variance. I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And who else? And the daughter against her mother. <laughs> You're going to be at odds. At odds. This is holy teaching. That's right. The same that social media trash that claim they're apostolic <laughs> and Pentecostal. That's right. This is old, holy, sanctified Bible teaching. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Who else? And the daughter against her mother. And who else? And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. What? Now spill over in your marriage. Yeah. <laughs> they go and spill over in your in-law. And the daughter- in- In-laws fighting. Why you got to keep going to that church? Why you don't never come to none of our outings? Wait a minute. Why you want me to come? And you got your second husband. She got her second husband. He got his third wife. I, I can't come in the midst of that. That's right. That's right. Your sister-in-law come to the house with her third husband and want to spend the night? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. E- Elaine, you can spend the night, but James can't. Right. That's my husband. That's your boyfriend. That's right. And you can't shack up here. You shack it. That's right. Well, I got a license. Not in God's eyes. Not in God's sight. Why? God said you're bound by the law. The law. As long as your husband lives. That's right. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Holiness interrupts marriage relationships. Yeah. It interrupts blood. That's right. That's right. Holiness does it. Holiness. Hmm? And a man's foes. A man foes. Shall be they of his own household. His whole house will turn on. That's right. Everybody. He ain't got to look at enemies out there. No. Enemies going to come right from under his roof. That's right. That's right. Now he wants to be holy. Can't take his wife to the club no more. No more buying her mini skirts to go partying. No more dancing. Yep. No more fingernail polish and nail hardener. Right. No more rhinestones in her ears. No more piercing of the navel. Right. Mm-mm. Oh, no. No more both of y'all getting y'all ink. No, sir. No, sir. Why? The Holy Ghost said what? And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. That's what the Holy Ghost said. Amen. Amen. That's something. So you that got this thinking, I don't want nobody to hate me. You in the wrong stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My God, man, this thing threatened your job. That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. Yes, it does. Oh, yes. Threatened your job. Job. <laughs> May have your CDLs. Track the trailer driver. Like where we're starting our trucking company for the church, the way of holiness transport. Yes. Amen. And got two trucks on the grounds now, and they look beautiful. They already lettered and everything. All right. Amen. And uh, turn, by the time I get back, our paperwork should be home. Their attorney got everything done. Wonderful. And, but we can't break not one, not one. Not one. Not one That's right. biblical law That's right. that make a half a penny. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Can't hold nothing that violate the Bible. No. Because the Lord may come while you're driving. Yes. And if I know you're driving something that's unlawful and don't say nothing, then God will get me. Oh, yes. If I allow it. Because right. God says, happy is the man that condemn not himself in the thing in which he allowed. So if I just allow it, God will get me. That's right. That's, That's right, Denny. Right, Happy is he. You hear what the Bible says in the book of Romans? Romans 14 and verse 22. Happy is he. That condemneth not himself. In what? In that thing which he alloweth. All right. Plan on opening up our own stores. Not just a flea market. I mean stores. That's right. Even if you got a thrift shop. 
Can't sell nothing in there. So I say, give the sinner back their tools. No, you don't. No. no, no, no. Only false prophets tell them that. That's right. That's right. I ain't gonna take off your jewelry and then give it to the sinner. That's right. Don't be trying to take it off the sinner. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. You don't bring no your old your woman don't bring her pants and give it to her sister and now she's saved and give it to her sister. No. no. You insert you encourage your sister to get rid of hers also. That's right. If you don't, what you're doing? They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Can't take my old bebop records yeah. and sell them to nobody. That's right. Because now I'm putting them in the same sin I came out of and I'm adding sin to, to sin. sin. That's right. That's right. What is that? That strengthen also the hands of evildoers. That strengthen the hand of evildoers. That none doeth return. That none return from his wickedness. That's what happens. That's right. When you strengthen the hand of the evildoer, you keep the sinner from returning from his sin. That's right. In other words, you make the sinner a prisoner of his own wickedness. Amen. Glory to God. You help. Help. Put them in bondage. Help We're looking to open up our own barbershops. Yes, you come in with an afro, we can't trim it. That's right. Because the Bible says it's shame for a man to have long hair, long hair. so we got to cut it, <laughs> not make it neat. That's right. Can't trim your afro to make it neat. No, no. Because now maintaining your long hair. That's right. The Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Do you hear what the Bible says? In 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 14. Glory to God. Doeth not even nature itself Doeth teach not nature you itself teach that you. if a man have long hair. It's what? It is a shame unto him. Every man with long hair should be embarrassed. Should be. And if you're not embarrassed, something wrong with you. That's right. It's a shame. True. It's a shame. It's a shame unto him. So when you step into a holy sanctified barbershop. I want you to neaten me up. All right, you, you go to sleep. When you wake up, you got a hustler. That's right. Amen. That's right. Cut your ponytail off. Yeah. A grown man with a rubber band around his hair. That's right. A bobby pin on a grown man. Amen. Shame unto him. The Bible says. If a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. That's the him. Bible talking. First Corinthians 11 and verse 14. We have a barbershop and got a bald spot in his head. We can't take no black dye and spray it. No. The Bible said, except your righteousness exceed See. the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Right. Ye shall in no case, no case. enter in. That's right. Jesus said, do not after their works. That's right. Amen. Do not after their works. After their works. Can't put no black dye in your beard. Can't put it in your mustache. Right. For God said, love not, love the, not world. the world. God said, you accept your righteousness. Exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You shall in no case, shall in no case. enter into the kingdom of God. You, God said, you ain't getting in. No case. So when we open our Bible shops, you got to keep it holy. Keep it holy. Why? You got to get in. You should right. want to get in. I don't mean in your barber's chair. No. Amen. Except your righteousness. This is holy teaching. In Matthew 5 and verse 20. Except your righteousness. Your righteousness. Shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. All right, Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You can't even sell gla drinking glasses that advertise liquor. That's right. That's right. Amen. Can't even, you can't even sell a glass. No. That advertise liquor. That's right. Can't sell a t-shirt that advertise drinking. Amen. Holy. Oh, holiness. Holy. I walking around with a t-shirt with big pink lips on them. <laughs> That's right. The Bible said, keep holiness. Holy. 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 Talk about it. Talk about it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. We have a barber shop. Yeah. Certain barber haircut charts we can't have. Right. 
We ain't putting two and three parts in your head. That's right. We ain't putting no hair design in your head. Amen. We ain't cutting your name in your head. We ain't giving you a box haircut or a gumby or a shag or a wag. That keep holiness holily. The Holy Ghost has. For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged. You, you young men that got these old little dreadlocks in your hair, mm. like you're a miniaturized version of buckwheat. That's right. Bible says a shame for a man to have long hair. That's right. If you look at society, every design that's come out want to make men act and look feminine and make women look masculine. That's right. That's right. How are we going to do it? Keep holiness holy. Give chapter and verse. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 10. Go on. For they that keep holiness they holy. that keep, keep holiness, holiness holy. Holy. Shall be judged holy. Shall be judged holy. Holy. And they that have learned and such they things. They that learn such things. Shall find what to answer. We'll find what to answer. Wherefore set your affection upon my word. Ha. Amen. God says do what? Set your affection upon my word. That's what got me preaching. That, that's right. Set yes. your we? affection. Upon my words. We're going to keep that old holy sanctified teaching. That's right. Not going to go beyond what's written. No. We're going to keep it in sync with what's written. That's right. All these businesses that we're looking to open up, while well, I'm thinking about it, uh, our youth conference, God willing, will be held in Greenville, North Carolina this year. Greensboro. 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 Beg your pardon. Greensboro. Amen. I don't want nobody running to the wrong place. <laughs> That's right. Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah. Wonderful. You keep watching the telecast, all of you that have experience in farming. We're going to organize our farming team. We have over 30 acres of land here in Georgia that one of our mothers gave to the church, Mother Rose. Now, uh, I know how to eat an apple. I don't know how to plant one. Amen. So I want to get the brothers and the sisters yeah. that know about farming That's right. That's right. so we can start working this land. Yes. I mean, real estate and architect and building and designing, that's my specialty. I find the building. So we can open up stores. Amen. We already organizing our trucking company so we can haul our own produce right. and stock our own shelves. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. We got hundreds of cooks. Wonderful. We want to have our own bakery. Yeah. But you can't put an order in for a wedding cake and you've been married already. That's right. That's right. That's right. The Holy Ghost said that they keep holiness holy. They that keep holiness holy, holy shall be judged holy. Shall be judged holy. That's right. That's right, Denny. But I got to keep it like the keep book. It. That's right. You got a second husband, second wife. We're going to have a chart in our bakeries. No orders is taken from you that already are married. And got a second husband, a second wife, and your sec first husband, first wife living. Right. Even in the barbershop, we're going to have scripture and rules. Wonderful. And pictures of the cuts that we won't do. Don't ask for this cut. Don't ask for that cut. Don't ask for that cut. Don't ask for that cut. Amen. Don't ask for that cut. Keep holiness holy. Amen. Because when the Lord come, the world going to be functioning just like it is. That's right. And I don't want a spot or a blemish upon me. Go ahead. Wonderful. Wonderful. All these wonderful. businesses we want to spread all around the world. That's wonderful. And I got to make sure that nothing in the business keep me out the kingdom. That's right. That's right. Nothing. Nothing. I don't care who quit, long as God don't quit on me. That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. Why the Holy Ghost said? For they that keep holiness holy shall be judged holy. They that do what? They that keep holiness. We got to keep it holy. That means no additives, no preservatives, no changes, That's no right. alterations. That's right. Keep holiness what? Holy. holy. Shall be judged shall holy. Shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things. They that learn such things. Shall find what to answer. You're going to find what to answer. Oh, yes. Huh? 
Wherefore, set your affection upon my word. And what else? Desire them. Yeah. Do what? Desire them. That's what we want you to do. That's it. Desire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go and take off. Hallelujah. Desire God's word above everything. And, and that's all we have to offer you. That's, that's all right. we have to offer oh. the world. That's right. Everybody that's watching the message of holiness, that's the only thing we have to offer you. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost, speak again, tongue, and live a holy, sanctified life right here. That's right. Or die and go to hell. That's it. From here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's Are right. you listening? Wherefore, set your affection upon my words. You see, with this type of preaching, they said, that old man, Jennings, he got people in bondage. That's it's a said. cult. You can't do it. What's wrong with making a cake? For someone, if their marriage didn't work out, and if me, my, my husband's still living, I don't want him. Right. All right, you don't want him, but he's still your husband. He's still your husband. So if you're getting married again, and I'm an organ player, I can't play for you. That's right. If I'm a soloist, I can't sing for you. That's right. And if I perform the way and they say I pronounce you man and wife, I'm lying. Lying. That's right. Unless I get up and say I pronounce you adulterer and adulteress. Now I'm telling the truth. That's right. And I'm pretty sure you ain't going to want me to do that. Oh, no, no. They wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't like that. Thing. They wouldn't like that. No, they wouldn't like that. Pastor that. Jenny, you mean it really takes all that? Everything that God say to get in. Oh, yes. It's not like this old religious junk that's out here. That's right. That's want to say they're holy. That's right. With all these loopholes. <laughs> it ain't no loopholes in God. No. Listen, I wish it was. The most preachers wouldn't admit that, but I, I admit it right now. Right. Pastor Gino Nicolius Jennings wish there were, how many, listen, did any of my ministers find, any brothers y'all find loopholes? No. If y'all do, would y'all please tell me where it is? How old is my elder? 80. Listen, 80. If you find the loophole, please show it to me. Show it. Show it. Amen. We're going to sit and talk. <laughs> I'm going right. to write them loopholes down. That's right. And I'm going to practice them. Yes. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to practice them until I get it down packed. That's right. Then I'm going to show you what it is. <laughs> Amen. But it ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Just come on and keep holiness. Holy. 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 Let, let's just do it. Oh, yes. So we got many businesses to open up for the church which make more responsibility on my shoulder. Yes, sir. But I got to make sure that stuff run like the Bible. That's right. Amen. That's right. Have our own busing service. Yeah. But we can't take no one to Atlantic City to gamble. Right. Can't take nobody to Las Vegas Casino to gamble. That's right. I don't care if they offer us a million dollars a trip. That's right. That's I already right. turned down over $3 million offered to the church. The mm. whole organization wanted to rent our school and gymnasium uh, had a contract, I think it was a three-year contract, offering us $100,000 a month. $100,000 a month? All right. We could have paid the whole campus off with that. $100,000 a month, that's over $3 million. Could have paid everything off. Amen. That's what I said. Go ahead, take Amen. Amen. But brother, I had to come back with Bible. Yeah. Told them no, Chris, no Christmas parties in the place. No Halloween parties. No, 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 none of that. Can't, can't, can't allow no uh, Christmas decorations in the school. That's right. No Halloween decorations in the school. No dances, no proms. That's right. No neighborhood parties. Amen. Not even a Santa Claus decoration. None. None. And we wrapped it all up with Bible yeah. and presented it to them. And I knew what they was going to say. Well, we respect your religious beliefs, so we got to turn, you know, we got to, you know, kind of try our sources somewhere else. All right. All right. Pastor Jennings, that was over $3 million. What do we care? That's right. I ain't nobody's hoe. You can just throw money at me and buy me. Amen. 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 Money don't move me. Millions of dollars have passed through my hands. Not thousands, millions. Amen. They don't phase me at all. Wonderful. 
I'm not phased over millions of dollars. I don't stuff don't move me. Right. The only thing that moves me is heaven. That's right. That's what moves me. That's Hallelujah. Right. Oh, say God. That's the thing that moves me. Amen. Do you hear what they say? For they that keep holiness holy. They that keep God's word right. Shall be judged holy. That's what I want to be judged. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first direction. On such a second death have no power. No power. I'm an architect and a false church is building a church. I can't design no church for you. No. no, no, no. I said, what? I can't design. The Bible said, tear down the houses of Baal, That's right. not build them. That's right. The Bible said, tear them down. Tear them down. If you got idols and statues all in your church, I can't repair them for you. I can't fix idolatry. No. I got to demolish idolatry. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. What did Paul say to Galatia? In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 18. If I build again. The things which I destroyed. What do I make myself? I make myself a transgressor. Here's the Bible against idolatry and I'm a painter. And I'm painting your fake statue of Jesus. Amen. I can't even sand blast it. That's right. Can't even, I can't even clean the brick of your false church. That's right. I can't beautify the house of Baal at all. At all. That's right. I'm a designer. I can't even give a false church recommendations how to beautify it. That's right. I tell you how to burn it down. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his The Holy place. Ghost said in the book of Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 4. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence. They do what? And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence. They do what? They break down the altars no, of No, they paint them. They break down the altars they of Balaam. They lay down a new sidewalk for them. They break down the altars of Balaam. Point, they brick. They break down the altars Build of Balaam. Build a pulpit for them. They break down the altars of Balaam. Amen. Down. Let the church say. Amen. Let the church say. Amen. Let the church say. Amen. Everybody say. Amen. Let the church say. Amen. Everybody say, Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Let the preacher say, Amen. They break down the altars of Balaam in his presence. They break down. Break down the altars of Balaam. Break down. Oh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Break it down. Break down the altars of Balaam. When you do it on God's terms, yeah. you're keeping holiness holy. Oh, holy. When you try to take another route, Jesus said if you come any other way, you are a thief and a robber. That's right. That's right. See, Jesus called himself the Amen. amen. The Bible amen. said, Thus saith the amen, amen, which means he bear witness to himself. That's right. Amen. Don't you know when you say amen, you're saying God is right. That's right. You're saying God is right. That's right. So, how can you say amen to a lie? That's right. Hallelujah. And they break down the altars Glory of Balaam. Glory to God. Break it. Hallelujah. Break it down. That's right. Tear it up. And they break Demolish it. That's right. When we bought Lindley Avenue, we, we, we went on idol smashing fun. <laughs> I mean, the brother, we was hunting for idols. Amen. Like a bunch of thugs. Where's the idols? <laughs> 
having hammers, kicking them, busting them up. Amen. And did it with joy. With joy. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. I designed clothes, you know. And I remember a woman was going to pay me $3,000 if I just designed her, just designed her a pantsuit. She knew I knew fabric, and I knew how to get the fabric. She said, if you just designed me, Gino, a pantsuit, I, I give you $3,000. I said, no. She said, but it's $3,000. I said, what is that to me? $3,000 don't mean nothing to me. That's right. God means everything to me. That's right. I'm able to say no to millions of dollars Wonderful. if I can't get it right. Wonderful. I, I don't even second guess. I don't even feel tempted because the Lord has spoken. That's right. You know, when you get to a point in God, God becomes your first priority. Right. Yeah. Right. And this is where everybody should want to get in God, where God becomes your first priority. That's right. You're not even tempted by a dollar. That's right. You don't even give a second guess when someone try to offer you money unlawfully. It don't move you. So he that get it and riches. Here, 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 hear this. Jeremiah 17 and verse 11. So he that get it riches and not by right. And I came out of falsehood. That's all the false prophets would do. Exchange service so he, his friend can get a speaker's offering. Then go back to him. He get a speaker's offering. Another friend come in, run a week of revival. Another friend come there, preach for about two or three days. And then here you going to speak for a false prophet for his anniversary. You don't even believe all what that man preached. And yet you give him an anniversary offering. That's right. Don't even believe what the man preached. That's right. Behind his back, call him a false prophet and still go give him a speaker's offering. Amen. You little cheap heathens. That's cheap. You're a cheap heathen. That's right. Until you do this thing like the word of God said, your church is going to remain empty and vacant. Yeah. You've got to do it like God says it. That's right. That's That's the right. way God has proven to me. We don't have to budge. We are staying just in course with the Bible. That's right. And God does the rest. That's right. I don't have to bargain, Joan. Men are reaching out to me all over. I want to have a meeting with you. I'm like, about what? Discuss doctrine. I say, what is there something about the doctrine you don't believe? Well, ain't no well nothing. Either you believe what the Bible says or you don't. Well, you don't. If you don't believe it, just say you don't believe it. Well, I don't believe it. That's all I want to know. Have a good day. That's right. I'm done. Done. That's right. I'm done. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Amen. That's right. What is that? For they that keep holiness holy. They that keep holy. You preachers out there that's yelling about the truth of God, I want you to examine something. Yeah. How is it? You've been in the pulpit 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years yeah. and don't have nothing to show nothing for it at all. And you all saying that we're wrong, but yet we're the one with the results of God. That's right. You're claiming God sent you and you ain't got no results. That's right. None. None. Jesus said, if I, not if we be lifted up, I. if I be lifted up, glory to God, I draw all, all men unto me. Unto me. And they come coming to him. That's right. You trying to get the people to them. That's right. Amen. Amen. God lift Jesus up. That's it. He said, if I be lifted up, glory to God from the earth. I draw all men. Oh, and man. look at all these thousands going down. They're doing what God says. Said, that's right. The way God says it. Said. That's what we're emphasizing. That's right. That's do it the way God do it. That's right. The way God said it got to be done. That's right. If I can't do it that way, I may as well quit now. Yeah. Wonderful. What did he say? For they that keep holiness holy yes. shall be judged holy. All right, go back to where you originally were now. Back in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 25. Real quick. That frustrate the tokens of the lie. That frustrate. And it, frustrate. And, and it frustrates them too. Oh, yeah. They frustrate. Amen. They be over their social media yelling, oh, that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is a fake. It's fraud. It's phony. That's all right. You're going to obey it or lift up your eyes in hell. That's right. All of you that are here, that's in the overflow room, in the main auditorium, in the tent, if you have not repented of your sins yeah. and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you are a sinner now. That's right. Bible ain't tell you bow your head and raise your hand. Your lying bishop told you to do that. Amen. 
Bible ain't tell you accept Christ as your personal savior. Your lying bishop told you to do that. That's right. The word of God didn't say join the church. No. Your lying bishop made that recommendation. Amen. The Bible ain't say be baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said be baptized in the name, in the name. of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you can't get the That's name right. unless you know the name. That's right. When you know the name, you can say the name. That's right. When you say that name, you'll be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right. I want you to hear. Hear, hear now. Hear. You that is in the tent, you that is in the other overflow room, you that are here. That's right. You might as well get ready to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. All of you that's in the tent. That's not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want it, leave that tent and come over here now. Amen. You that's in the main auditorium, if you want it, stand on your feet. Yeah. You that's in the other auditorium, if you want it, you come on to the front. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. Come on. Amen. If there's any in the back, tell them, come on to the front. Tell them, come on, get out the way. Wonderful. If there's any in the back, tell them to come on out to the front. Wonderful. If there's any in the tent, come on in the church. Amen. Come from the tent and come on in here. Amen. 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 Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. How many we got back there? We got some back there. All right, Mac. Mac, leave them alone. All of them that's back there, y'all stay on back and get ready for baptism. Amen. All right, all of you that's getting ready for baptism, y'all brothers get out the door. Y'all come on out the door. Y'all come on out the door. All of you that's want to get baptized, follow them. Amen. Follow them. All of you that's in the tent, come on. All of you that's in the tent, come on. Amen. Hey man, I keep telling you, we keep holding this holy. Keep holding this holy. Yeah. That's right. But thank God, as long as we keep holding this holy, we're going to get the results of holy. That's right. We got a mother here want to be baptized? Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Who we got baptized? All right. Brother Raj and Brother Brandon. Wonderful. Give Brother Raj a hand. Uh, we got a mother in the wheelchair. What's that? We got, a t we got a pole in the tent? We got a pole over there in the tent? Oh, already heated? All right, uh, Jimmy, you be baptizing over here? Has Brother Jimmy been baptizing? All right, take Jimmy and make sure he's supervising. You get them in the tent. Jones, you go too. We got a large crowd going down the wall. Large crowd tonight, man. You got a large crowd tonight. Amen. We keep hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. We're keeping holding this holy. Hallelujah. Huh? Wonderful. We're keeping holding this holy. Wonderful. Wonderful. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't know they set up a pole in the tent. Wonderful. Amen. So they got a pole in the tent. They can baptize all of them in the tent. Them that's in the back and them that's in here, they can baptize them right in there. Wonderful. That's wonderful, isn't it? Amen. We're going to keep holding this holy. holy. Amen. Amen. James, who you got to help you to keep this number together? All right, you get someone to help you while they're getting together because we got uh, two locations that's baptizing. Wonderful. Be keeping holding this hold. This is the God's doing. <laughs> that's right. It's God's doing. That's right. All of you that are watching, come out of your churches. Amen. Leave your churches. I don't care who your pastor is. Pack up and leave your church. Come out of your churches and get ready to be holy like God said it. That's right. God said, blessed and holy is he to have part in the first resurrection on such a second death have no power. That's right. You can't make the first resurrection unless you're holy. Unless you're the holy. Bible said a, high, a highway shall be there and a way. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Not the way of Pentecostal. No. Not the way of non-denominational. Not the way of apostolic. Not the way of Baptist. No, no. Buddhist. No. No, the way of holiness. He said the way of holiness. holiness. And unless you're holy, you're not in the way. That's right. All right. Come on back tomorrow so I can cook you on an open fire <laughs> with some Bible. Prayer beginning at 11 o'clock. You better get here early if you want to see. 
Amen. Because every part of the building is packed. Amen. Even outside of the building Amen. is packed. All right. We thank God for all of you. Let us all stand. I'm going to ask you, please, don't crowd up the back area because they got a large crowd getting baptized. And I hope my camera crew get a chance uh, to get up there so they can film them that are being baptized there. And another camera can go where the tent is and get them and baptize them. All right. Eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you once again for your word and for them that are here. We thank you for the gospel of God and how you live up to what you have in the scriptures. That if I be lifted up from the earth, you declare you are drawn men unto me. We thank you for the word and for the fruit of the gospel. For those that have repented of their sins and get ready now to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Fill them with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Glory to God and the Spirit of God give utterance. We thank you for backing your word, standing behind it over and over again. We thank you again for this place and the provisions you continue to make. For the truth of God, let your peace and mercy be upon us. And we we'll give you thanks always, God, and protect us as we go back to our separate places. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, let every heart say amen. Amen.